The final topic from Chapter 3 is the developmental aspects of cells and tissues. This screencast was designed to help you achieve the following objectives. Define hyperplasia, hypertrophy, and atrophy. And describe some of the general age-related changes that occur in tissues. Most tissues of the body undergo cell division at least until the end of puberty once adult body size is reached. Structures of the body, tissues, organs increase in size as a result of hyperplasia, that is, an increase in cell numbers. The lengthening of bones as well as the growth and the size of the uterus during pregnancy is due to an increase in cell number or hyperplasia. After the end of puberty, some tissues still retain their ability to undergo cell division, while others lose this ability. Epithelial tissue, for example, which is responsible for covering and protecting organs of the body, covering the outer surface of the body as the epidermis, and lining the surfaces of hollow organs such as the GI tract, respiratory tract, never lose their ability to undergo cell division because these cells are constantly being destroyed and sloughed off by abrasion and must be replaced. Even after a tissue loses its ability to undergo cell division, it can still increase in size, and therefore the organ that the tissue composes can still increase in size. This is, a, this is achieved through a process called hypertrophy. Hypertrophy is the increase in the size of an organ due to an increase in cell size. Skeletal muscles, for example, do not undergo cell division very well at all. However, you know that you can enlarge your skeletal muscles by engaging in resistance exercises, such as lifting weights. This increase in the size of the skeletal muscles is not due to an increase in the number of skeletal muscle cells, but due to an increase in the size of the skeletal muscle cells. Just as organs can increase in size due to hyperplasia or hypertrophy, organs can also decrease in size or atrophy. Atrophy is often referred to as a wasting away of an organ. And typically this happens due to a decrease in use and or a decrease in stimulation. For example, here we have a before and after on the left active muscles on the right. Let's say the person may have broken their arm and the uh, arm had been immobilized in a cast where they couldn't bend their elbow or possibly not their shoulder. And due to that lack of use, the muscles have actually atrophied or wasted away. Typically to regain full or restore full use of the arm, the individual has to go to physical therapy and participate in exercises to rebuild those muscles and uh, gain, regain the uh, full use of that arm. You'll also see with people who are confined to wheelchairs due to the severing of the spinal cord, they're unable to move their legs because their nervous system no longer has a connection to the muscles of their legs. And you'll notice that their legs are smaller than normal. Again, this is due to lack of stimulation of the skeletal muscles in those legs, and therefore those skeletal muscles atrophy or waste away. Finally, I would like to mention a few general age-related effects on tissues. As one ages, there is an increased risk of neoplasms. Neoplasms are uncontrolled cell division, and in some cases, these can lead to cancer. Tissues also do not function as efficiently as one ages. 
Epithelial tissues specifically are more easily damaged, and in general, tissue healing is not as efficient. Now let's review the objectives of this screencast. Define hyperplasia, hypertrophy, and atrophy, and describe some of the general age-related changes that occur in tissues. The screencast marks the end of our discussion of the information in Chapter 3.